Today, we're doing a head-to-head -head comparison between the Hymer Active 1.0 and the Road Trek Zion SRT. Which one of these short camper vans will come up the winner? It's hard to say because both these vans are really great in their own way. Hi everyone, I'm Neil Balthaser and this is Ultra Mobility, your channel all about Class B and B plus camper vans. If you love Class B vans or you're looking to buy a Class B van, then this is your channel and you should subscribe. I do reviews and head-to-head -head comparisons like this every week. Now this isn't the first nor the second head-to-head -head competition for the Active. We've previously pitted it up against one of my personal favorites, the Pleasureway Lexor FL and the ever-popular Winnebago Travato 59G. Each time the Actives come up the winner, but this head-to-head -head comparison is different because both these vans are built on the Ram Promaster 2500 chassis and that gives them exactly the same exterior and interior dimensions. Both are also built by Erwinheimer Group North America. That means they have similar levels of fit and finish, quality, and warranties. But each has a different layout and each has made different compromises and design choices that set it apart from the other. Does one do a better job than the other? Let's jump inside and find out. The biggest difference between the Zion SRT and the Active is that the Zion has the ever popular rear lounge with convertible sofa bed setup. Why is this layout so popular here in North America? Because it is a superior lounge to the Active's. All the shortcomings of the Active's Lounge are addressed here. You've got lots of comfortable seating for four, and if that wardrobe closet wasn't there, you'd have room for five. Not only is there lots of seating, the sofa electronically reclines so that you can lay back and watch a movie. And speaking of movies, the 24-inch flat screen TV is sensibly placed so that everyone in the lounge can watch it. An important note, however, is that the TV is not standard in the Zion. It's an $850 upgrade. A table can be easily put up so that family and friends can share a meal. There's plenty of headroom, lots of light from all those windows, and when the weather's nice, you can fling open those back doors and with the optional screen package, let the outside in. I mean, as lounges go, this is a great setup. There's also two three-point seat belts, which make the Zion SRT as suitable for family camping as the Active. As a bonus, you get a front lounge as well. Just move the pedestal table up to the front and swivel the captain's chairs around. Now someone can be using the front lounge while someone else is in the rear lounge. Now let's head into the Active's lounge. It's a permanent lounge situated here in the front of the van. That's kind of cool because it uses the cab as living area when you swivel those front seats around. I like the table has an extension that flips up when you need it. Like the Zion SRT, there are two three-point seat belts for the jump seat, which means that like the Zion, the Active is suitable as a family camper van. The jump seat, however, is on the small side. You're not going to get a couple adults sitting there comfortably like you can in the Zion. Also, the jump seat doesn't recline. The TV's in a terrible position sitting behind the jump seat so that movie night with the family isn't going to be possible. On the plus side, it is a standard feature unlike the Zion. Lighting is poor in the Active's Lounge but I love that giant pop-up sunroof. It gives the Active an open and airy feeling during the day. So the lounge in the Active is nice, but the Zion's lounge is superior. Moving on to the galley. The galleys are pretty similar. They're both located on the passenger side of the van, and like the Active, you get about the same counter prep space. A two-burner propane stove, the same microwave, 
and a similarly sized sink. But the Zion SRT gives you a ton more storage since that refrigerator can stay on the driver's side, freeing up all the cabinet space below the counter. Plus, the refrigerator is much larger at five cubic feet. Also, the Zion offers an induction cooktop option, which the Active doesn't. As far as electrical systems are concerned, they're both almost identical. They both come with two lead acid batteries, standard, a 2000 watt inverter, and optional solar. An underhood generator is optional on the Zion. So as a base package, the Zion is pretty lacking without that standard generator. Here we are inside the Actives Galley. Now you can see that there's a lot less galley storage than on the SRT because the microwave and refrigerator have been moved onto this side of the van to free up space across the aisle for the bathroom. While the microwave is the same size, the refrigerator is considerably smaller. Speaking of bathrooms, let's just get this out of the way. The Active features a five gallon cassette toilet. You're either gonna love or hate the cassette toilet. The Zion has a much larger nine gallon black tank. I prefer a black tank because you have to empty your gray tank anyway. So while you're at it, you can simply pull the black tank valve and empty your black tank as well. That's just me. We touched on the electrical system, but it's important to note again that the Active comes with that underhood generator standard, while the Zion's is optional. Like the Zion, you can upgrade the Active to 400 amp hours of lithium with a $5,000 Ecotrek upgrade. It's the same upgrade for both fans. Also, both offer Volt Start as a $1,900 option. So you can have the van start its engine automatically to recharge your lithium batteries. And that's useful if you have pets and you're away and need to run the air conditioner. So I'm kind of torn on the galley. On the one hand, the Zion SRT gives you a lot more storage and a bigger refrigerator, but without a standard generator, its electrical system is lacking. Is it better to have more kitchen storage or a standard underhood generator? I know what my choice is. Do you? All right, let's talk bedrooms. Here we are in the SRT's bedroom. On the Zion, the lounge converts to the bedroom. You push a button to lower the sofa into a good sized bed. It's plenty big for two people and it has the added bonus that you can either fill in that middle section with cushions to have one large bed or leave it open and have two twin beds. Flexibility in your bed configuration is a real strength of this particular layout. I prefer leaving that middle section open so that it's easier to get into and out of bed without crawling over the other person. Another plus for the SRT's bed is that it's at a good height. You're not gonna have to climb up and down into bed. Just swing your legs out and your feet are touching the ground. A minus though for the SRT's bed is that it's not as comfortable to lay in as the Actives. You can feel the seams and those ottomans don't use memory foam. Because the bedroom is converted from the lounge though, you get the benefit of having a 24 inch TV in your bedroom. Jumping into the Actives bedroom, we can see we have a completely different configuration. Here, the bed is permanent, and that means you can leave it down and made up and still have your front lounge. That's a big plus for the Active. It's not a huge deal to have to make your bed up every night, but it sure is nice not having to. The bed is a pretty good size too. Two people are going to sleep comfortably and I can tell you that the bed in the Active is much more comfortable to lay in. The mattress is a proper mattress and there's a wooden slat system to give the mattress support. The biggest disadvantage of the Active's bed is that you're gonna have to climb over the other person to get into and out of it. That and the bed is higher up, so you're gonna have to climb up and down to get into it. Now those may not be deal breakers, but it's an important consideration. The biggest difference between the Active and the Zion's bedrooms is that the Active's converts into a garage. 
Just flip that bed up against the wall and you have a huge garage with tons of storage above and below, including pass-through storage for longer bulky items. And that's just a huge advantage the Active has over the SRT. So who wins this head-to-head -head comparison? The Zion SRT with its highly functional lounge and tons of kitchen storage, or the Active 1.0 with its versatile front lounge and tons of garage storage. I have to give it to the Active 1.0. Again, the biggest strength of the Zion SRT is its rear lounge. But honestly, the Active's lounge holds its own. It's not like the SRT's lounge just blows it out of the water. But the bedroom slash garage of the Active does blow the SRT's bedroom out of the water. In a bedroom, sleeping comfort is paramount and the Active delivers. Plus, you get the added bonus of all that storage when you convert the bedroom into a garage. The SRT gives you more galley storage, but I can't store a canoe in the kitchen. One of the reasons why it's so hard to beat the Active is because it balances its trade-offs so well. It's one of the only Class B vans on the market that gives you a permanent rear bed, a permanent front lounge, pass-through storage in a garage, loads of standard features, and tons of options. And it does it all in a short 19-foot package. With its industry-leading six-year warranty and two years of roadside assistance, it's no wonder the Active is so hard to beat. I love doing these head-to-head -head comparisons. And if you like them too, then you should watch more of them by clicking the playlist to the right. And if you want to support me and my channel and encourage me to make more camper van reviews and comparisons, then please subscribe by clicking the circular subscribe button below.